Hi guys. Well, it just cannot make up its mind whether it wants to be a beautiful day or a dreary gloomy day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this Saturday morning, September 18th, 2021, the last summer weekend, the last real summer weekend beginning, and uh, I have a full weekend with Airbnb visitors and whatnot, so I got to do what I'm now doing, going to try to do every Saturday. I guess this is the second edition now of my Hopium Apocaloptimism Roundup uh, here now on September 18th. Uh, as I simply go through the mostly the mainstream media, but I do appreciate all you folks sending me stories about all of the hopium, the, you know, this desperate clinging at straws of hope as, uh, <laughs> as this society, this civilization, and this planet go uh, directly down the toilet. And uh, guys, obviously, we all know the number one story, I don't know how many of you have sent me uh, uh, this link uh, to all over the mainstream media about the world's biggest tree. The world's biggest tree, the General Sherman, that giant sequoia being uh, in the path of this raging wildfire out there. and. Uh, Guys, you know, I am from Georgia, you have to remember. So, you, you know, the fact uh, that the General Sherman tree is getting ready to die in a fire, you, you, you know, there's just a little bit a uh, sense of ironic black humor uh, underneath uh, the fact that General Sherman is getting ready to go up in flames, but of course, the hopium in all of this as this wildfire, uh, you know, bears down on, uh, bears down on the world's biggest tree that firefighters, I guess, are wrapping the tree in aluminum foil, basically. So I thought, you know, when, you, when I read this, you know, I was picturing this tree wrapped up, you know, going up like 50 feet up the tree. Uh, do you guys understand what they're talking about here? Here is a picture. I hope this damn screen, let me try to block. Can you see this? The, uh, this aluminum foil blanket to uh, turn away this advancing wildfire. Looks like it goes about six feet up uh, the trunk of the world's biggest tree, but I, I, obviously guys, we are all hoping that the General Sherman tree, despite its name and all the rest of those, don't go up in flames unless they're already up in flames as I am having, making this Roundup right now. So let's all send our prayers and our aluminum foil wrapping to the ironically named General Sherbet Tree. Uh, we will see, won't we? Okay, now I'm just in, this is just in no particular order. Okay, I wanted to put the General Sherman Hopium up top. <coughs> uh, so, you know, I mentioned last week from my friends over <clears throat> at uh, Amazon Watch, you know, we asking us to sign this petition. So, <clears throat> they went on this petition drive to uh, protect 80% of the Amazon rainforest. Uh, I think, so that means so if you're protecting 80%, that means that no more than 20, we can't lose more than 20%. Well, I'm pretty sure we have already lost more than 20% of the Amazon. But anyway, 
we did send the petition out. And here is an update. <clears throat> From global financial giants to elected officials, we have demanded accountability and succeeded. Yes. They have succeeded. This is the petition. There you go. And, and I was making fun of this petition driving right here. They are claiming success. Defending the defenders of the Amazon is now a movement and a rallying cry around the world. The calls of you, the calls of you, we really can end Amazon crude talking about, you know, apparently all of the oil drillers and all the rest packing up their bags and fleeing the Amazon so we can all go back to sleep. So now that we have signed the petition, obviously, this week's request, will you make a monthly donation ahead of our next win? Uh, ah, don't you, Sancho? No, sir. You're not going to start playing this game every rant. Just deal with that chippy. That chippy will be there after this rant. All right. Moving along. So from the Amazon jungle right here to the good old uh, Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana. Yes. Exxon's... Gulf Coast Carbon Hub gains the support of energy titans. This is from Bloomberg. An ambitious project aimed at capturing millions of tons of carbon emissions along the U.S. Gulf Coast in Texas garnered the support of some of the world's biggest refiners and chemical manufacturers. Dow Incorporated Chevron Corporation, Phillips 66 Corporation, and whoever the hell the Calpine Corporation were among 11 companies who agreed to, quote, begin discussing plans. Begin discussing plans, close quote, uh, on a project first floated by Exxon Mobil Corporation. Uh, yes, the proposed, I guess, carbon hub could store 50 million tons of carbon dioxide a year by 2030 and double that amount to 100 million tons by 2040. Let's all wish those Save the Planet Energy Titans, uh, a roaring success. And uh, guys, I'm uh, just, uh, just to make sure we all understand the difference between uh, carbon capture at the source and carbon, uh, what's the word? There, there's two kinds of carbon capture. What they're talking about in that story is, you know, actually never letting the carbon get into the air. And uh, the other uh, one is actually sucking the carbon dioxide out of the air after it has already escaped. Uh, just so you understand the, the difference in the levels of hopium. I loved it. I noticed this uh, this story, you know, from Iceland, talking about that uh, the world's biggest uh, carbon sucking machine in Iceland has found its way into the Optimist magazine. Yes, I already covered that story, but I see the Optimist. I need to uh, subscribe to the Optimist. Anyway, so the optimist is cheering on the world's biggest carbon-sucking machine in Iceland. So from Texas and Iceland. All right, I don't know. I guess this is anywhere on the planet. 
from USA Today. Scientists have created the world's whitest paint, and it could eliminate, not reduce, it could eliminate the need for air conditioning. Yes, all right. The whitest paint in the world has been created in a lab at Purdue University. A paint so white that it could eventually reduce or even eliminate the need for air conditioning. Yes. Okay. We now are going to paint the planet white. I should have uh, done this video in front of the Maggie May, my uh, little white camper over there. Uh, I'm looking at it. You can barely see any white paint on the roof of this pure white trailer. You know, all of this crap, this uh, greenwashing, hopium crap uh, about painting, just painting every roof and I guess parking lot, highway, I, I, I guess there's just some uh, that, that you just assume that white paint does not get dirty. I never hear anything with all of these stories about how white paint is going to save this planet and eliminate air conditioning off the face of the planet about the amount of water and, and other energy it's going to take to keep the white paint clean. But anyway, I guess that's another hopium uh, story for another day. All right, we're going to check in with a couple of our favorite, I don't know if they're millionaires or billionaires, but uh, we're going to check in with Prince William and Al Gore. First, let's go across the pond and see what Prince William is saying this week. So uh, I'm going to have a lot more about this uh, in a few weeks. So uh, I'm just going, this is just kind of a preface uh, when they announce, when Prince William announces the Earth Shot, the Project Earth Shot. Uh, winners uh, on October 5th. Uh, we can look forward to celebrating the winners according to Prince William, uh, David Attenborough, and some others over there in England about the winner, the Save the Planet winners. But as we get ready for that, Prince William wants to be able to look his children in the eye about climate change. Yes. <clears throat> it was almost exactly one year ago that Prince William launched his $50 million Earthshot Prize with the aim of finding solutions over the next decade to the world's biggest environmental challenges and now and now the prince, come on, shut up. And now the prince shared his inspiration for the project. Yes, an aide to the prince disclosed that the prince wants to be able to look his children in the eye over how he used his position you know, as a multi-millionaire or billionaire royal uh, with those adorable kids to fight climate change. Uh, anyway, let's uh, get down to the bottom line uh, of this press release from Prince William the ghost writing author of Earthshot, How to Save Our Planet. The prince concluded, you, you know, this, uh, 
this guest editorial quote. So, at the end of 2018, inspired by the brilliant solutions I had seen on the ground in Namibia, yes, the brilliant solutions, you know, towards saving the planet, he had seen on the ground in Namibia and elsewhere, and at the same time horrified by the cliff edge the scientists were predicting, yet determined not to give up. I set about asking how I could play a helpful role in bridging that disconnect. I wanted to recapture JFK's moonshot spirit of human ingenuity, purpose, and optimism, and turn it with laser-sharp focus and urgency onto the most pressing challenge of our time, repairing our planet. So we will find out here on October 5th the five winners, the five greatest ideas that Prince William has heard on ideas to save our planet. I'm sorry, to repair our planet. So that is how Prince William is using his position to repair the planet. So what is Al Gore? Uh, and his group, the Climate Reality Project. Al Gore, you know, his own group is called the Climate Reality Project. So I wanted to check in with Uncle Al to see how he and the Climate Reality Project were saving the planet uh, this week. <clears throat> and uh, this is what uh, he had to tell me, Sam, there is no denying the climate crisis is in an existential problem. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, talking about the UN's latest dire report, looking at all of the catastrophic global consequences. Uh, all of the devastating wildfires, floods, hurricanes, all that shit we have seen this uh, summer. Uh, yet, when we talk about the climate crisis, Sam, it is easy to get lost in data points, in science jargon, and forget about the human side of the story. Yes. Real people are speaking up and taking action around the globe. Neighbors are talking to neighbors about a better, more sustainable tomorrow. Young people are taking to the streets, demanding climate action now before it is too late. Yes. Uh... <coughs> Everyday people are writing to their representatives saying, enough is enough. That is exactly what we are here to facilitate. Climate reality has been building a powerful movement of grassroots activists for 15 years. Oh, yeah. Yes. With the climate crisis getting worse by the day, we need to train ever more people if we want to achieve the change we so desperately need. That is where you come in, Sam. We cannot grow this planet-saving movement without your support. Hmm. So I have to ask, will you support our movement to solve the climate crisis 
with a gift of $15 or more today? Yes, that's the second time I've been asked that question, Al, in the past 15 minutes. Uh, oh, yeah, speaking of uh, support, I really want to thank uh, Frederic Poulet for her continuing support to whatever it is uh, that I do with my life. All right, we've got two more. All right, what is going on with that pesky little water scarcity problem here <clears throat> building on the planet? From Business Insider, how scientists are creating technology based on a beetle's exoskeleton that could help end water scarcity. Two-thirds of the world's population face an extreme water shortage at least over one month a year. Many of these places are dry and deserts with no reliable source of fresh water other than fog, that is. But fog capture is not as easy as you might think, at least for humans. All right, but to the rescue, the Namib desert beetle, on the other hand, has practically perfected the art of fog capture. Here is how scientists are creating new technology based on the Namib desert beetle's exoskeleton that could help end, end water scarcity on this planet. Thank you, the Namib Desert Beetle, for saving us. But we are going to, you, you, you know, guys, I joke about uh, about these giant planet-eating corporations and their greenwashing sustainability pledges. But uh, you can't argue with these facts, and so maybe I have to eat some crow here. And we're going to check in with Pepsi, and I guess probably we're going to mention Coke in, in this article, too, from Reuters News. <clears throat> PepsiCo to slash plastic use in sustainability push. This is how PepsiCo is going to save the planet. PepsiCo wants to cut back on the use of new plastic and plans to expand its soda stream sparkling water business as part of its sustainability strategy. The drinks and snacks giant announced a goal on Wednesday to reduce new plastic use serving by half across all of its brands by 2030 Yes, uh, blah, blah, blah. The initiative called PEP Plus is a response to growing calls from consumers, clients, and climate change advocates to fight plastic waste. Its main rival, Coca-Cola, already has plans to sell bottles that are fully made from recycled plastic in the United States. Okay. So what are we going up against? According to a Greenpeace report, Coke generates over 100 billion, over 100 billion bottles of single-use plastic each year, while PepsiCo, with everything from its plastic drinks bottles to plastic snack bags, uses 2.3 million metric tons of plastic every year. Yes. Uh, PepsiCo CEO Ramon Lagarda told Reuters that by scaling up the soda stream 
do-it-yourself sparkling water business that in that in part could help reduce the use of more than 200 billion plastic bottles by 2030. Okay, so guys, let's uh, right now, if you believe this uh, statistic, this greenwashing BS statistic, that PepsiCo uses only 2.3 million metric tons of plastic per year. 2.3 million metric tons of plastic. So in the next nine years, they're going to reduce that by half. And this also, I guess, you're supposed to ignore the fact of how much that 2.3 million tons is supposed to increase. Let's say that PepsiCo holds steady at 2.3 million metric tons of plastic and somehow reduces the amount of plastic by 50%. That means, based at this year's rate, that as part of its sustainability pledge, one corporation will only be creating 1.15 million tons of, uh, of plastic every year. 1.15 million tons of plastic and this is being reported in the mainstream media with no trace of irony as good news. The definition of sustainability, uh, make no mistake about this, the definition of sustainability in the year 2021 or in this case in the year 2030 the definition of sustainability will be when one corporation only produces 1.15 million tons of plastic and they will probably be getting all sorts of awards is my guess. And uh, so we want to thank PepsiCo for stepping up to the plate and only producing 1.15 million tons of plastic in 10 years. But anyway, guys, I need to uh, wrap up today's uh, hopium roundup because I probably have to go... Uh, look at all the plastic bottles around here and uh, clean up this yard so uh, I don't offend any of my Airbnb guests coming in for the weekend for the last summer weekend and I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy the very last weekend of the summer of 2021. We will see you next Saturday with the first hopium roundup of the fall of 2021 assuming we're all still here bye guys